moving on to the next team here, we do have the Indianapolis Colts. They also finished 11 and 5 last season, making a wild card berth. Uh, but, but of course, they got the beat by the Buffalo Bills, 27 to 24. Philip Rivers has officially retired from from the NFL, and they picked up Carson Wentz here in the off season. So, Wyatt, they filled their quarterback needs in the uh, in the free agency. Uh, the Colts are a team that's pretty that that I thought was pretty complete. So, you know. Uh, with that being said, who is their best draft pick this season? Yeah, I think their best draft pick was their first rounder, Quiddy Pay, defensive end out of Michigan. He's a guy that I think should have went in the top fifteen because I think he will be a top fifteen player um, from this draft. So I was really excited that they landed him. I think that that was a spot they needed to fill. I know that they didn't go with offensive tackle, which everybody freaked out about, and at the time I was freaking out about. But today, of course, they did solve that that issue with Eric Fisher. Um, which essentially lines up their offensive line good enough for the future. Now, I mean, y- you lose Anthony Costanza, which is a huge loss for you, and you replace him with Eric Fisher, who's a great tackle uh, to fill that void with, and a guy who is, you know, uh, still has the young side of him. He is not, you know, nearing retirement within the next couple of years. So, um, you know, I think that was a good pickup for them. But I would say, even though they didn't go with an offensive tackle, it was still an all around pretty good draft, but their best pick was Quiddy Pay. So with that being said, why uh, you did mention the name Eric Fisher, which he just signed a deal with the Indianapolis Colts today as a one-year deal. However, he will not be ready to play till at least late October. So I mean that's that's almost half of the season that he will that he will miss miss from that Achilles tear uh, in the playoff season last year. So uh, let's kick, let's kick it over to Tory here. Tory, who is the best draft pick in your eyes for the Indianapolis Colts? I I, I gotta agree. Quiddy Pay. Quiddy Pay was projected to be anywhere from number eight all the way to 15. Uh, the fact that he fell, and we talked about it on draft night, like he was kind of free-falling, and I'm like, man, the Colts picked him. I'm like, they got to steal. They have a they have a guy that's basically, if you ask me, is, is almost a clone to like what Robert Mathis was for them. So, you know, to get him at 21, the guy is 6'4", 272 pounds. He's got a great pass rush, ar- pass rush arsenal on him. You know, this guy is a plug-and-play defender that they have. So I absolutely 110% agree with White on this. Quiddy Pay was a steal at 21 for them. Yeah, and anytime you can steal a offensive lineman, I think it's a win-win in your in your eyes there, like I said I said, I said earlier. So on the flip side of the coin, where where there's good, there there's always bad. So, Tori, let's kick it to, to, to you first here on the snake-style debate here. Who was the worst draft pick for the Colts this season? So I'm going to go with their sixth round pick, number 218, Sam Ellinger. <laughs> Sam Ellinger was a highly rated prospect. Everybody knows coming out of college. I believe he was, was he the number one rated recruiter. He was the number one rated quarterback in that class. And as we as we know, Texas doesn't have a great track record for developing quarterbacks anyways. Right. Um, but Sam Ellinger, um, by the way, uh, rip to his brother. His I don't know if you saw that. His brother passed away. Uh, I did not. Yeah. The other day, the other day. So he was a linebacker I'm, I, for Texas. For, yeah. Wow. I'm just, I'm just really not a fan of Sam Ellinger's game. I don't think it translates well to the NFL. I know why it was like, this guy's either going to be great or out of the NFL. I'm, I'm leaning towards 99% that this guy's going to be out of the NFL or a, one of those guys that's third string that bounces around the league for three or four years and then is gone. Right. Yeah, so the one thing that kind of raised my eyes when I saw this draft pick was, didn't the Colts just draft, draft, drafted Jacob Easton in the second or third round just last season to kind of be the predecessor to Phillip? Uh, so I'm kind of confused of what their quarterback situation is because, like, right now they have Jacob Easton as second string, uh, Jalen Morton as third string, and then Sam Ellinger is sitting at fourth, fourth string here. So right now they have actually have five quarterbacks on the roster going in, going in, going into camp. So I'm kind of confused of what they're doing. Oh, like over there, and Carson Wentz is, was only what five, six years into the league, right, guys? So I mean, yeah. he, he, I mean, he definitely has a definitely has a lot of tread left on those tires. So why? Well, I can who, tell you exactly what that pick for Sam Ellinger was. It was 100 percent a second insurance policy for Carson Wentz because the Colts kind of looked at themselves and thought, well, we got a guy who is extremely talented, can be talented. He's shown that. He was in the MVP race, but he's also a guy that averages two to three injuries a year and a guy who can never stay healthy. So we're going to give him two solid backups so that way if this does fall through, we've got two other guys behind him that could be vital options 
for our offense moving forward in the future. I think that's kind of where they were going with Ellinger still on the board. Honestly, I was surprised that Ellinger was still on the board in the – well, they got him in the second – or not second, excuse me, sixth round, right? That sounds right. Sixth yeah, round. I, th- yeah. I, I, was exp- I was surprised he was even there, honestly. I thought he was a third, maybe fourth rounder, a day two guy for sure in my opinion. Um, like I said, he's one of those guys that will either be a household name or you will never hear the name Sam Ellinger again. And like 20 years down the road, we'll all look back and be like, hey, you remember that Sam Ellinger guy, you know, went to hmm. Texas, you know. It, it'll be one of those situations. Or like I said, or he'll be a household name. I, I, th- like, I don't think like there's Chris, any middle of the road here. Like Chris Sims. Exactly. Let me Except ask you guys. Get his own show. So let me uh, go ahead and sidetrack here a tad bit here. Has there ever been a successful Texas quarterback in recent memory in the NFL? Yeah, in the NFL. Is no. is Colt McCoy the most Col- successful? Would you one? count Colt McCoy as successful? That's what I was about yeah, to say. Would you count Colt? I mean, well, I mean, like he's, he's probably been the most he, successful. He's been in the, in the league the longest, he, right? The league for, yeah, yeah. He's he's got longevity. Yeah, he's a career backup guy. I think he's he has, not somebody you're going to hand the keys over to your. I think he has two. Franchise. I think he has two Super Bowl rings too, if I'm not mistaken. So well, it wasn't because of him. Well, no, 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 no it wasn't but, because of him. But <laughs> I mean, a ring's a ring, right? Hold, like at the hold, end of the day, holding that clipboard. <laughs> I would wear that yeah. ring proud. So, why? Who was your Colts' worst draft pick? I mean, because you kind of boasted on Sam Ellinger there for like a little bit, but who was your worst pick? Yeah, my worst pick for him, uh, and I'm, I'm going to botch this name, so heads up for everybody here. Uh, I went with defensive end Quiddy Pay for my best pick. My worst pick is going to be defensive end out of Vanderbilt, Deo Odabingo. Totally botched that. I know I am so sorry. Um, but once again, you, you didn't really need another defensive end here. I wasn't really sure what that pick was for. Um, you just Definitely got quitty pay, which I felt like was yeah. a steal. I don't know. I, I wasn't. I wasn't a big fan of that move. Plus, nothing that he really did. It, he didn't really do anything spectacular at college. He was not ever really anybody that you know had had drawn out of the pack that anybody was like, oh hey, excited about. He was coming to the league, so I don't. I don't know. I and I, like I said, I was kind of just confused as to why they went with a defensive end there whenever you just got quitty pay there. So, I mean, it's going to be a mean pass rush, and he'll add to some depth, but I don't think we'll see much out of him, at least in Indianapolis. If he's going to do anything, he needs to go somewhere else. So what is your grade for the Indianapolis Colts in this year's draft? Uh, I, give, I give him a B plus, or excuse me, not a B plus, excuse me, B minus. Um, like I said, Quiddy Pay fell to them. I think that was a really good pick. I think Sam Ellinger, they got him at a good place. Um, they didn't reach for him at all. That was really the main problem that I thought a lot of teams were going to have with quarterbacks like Davis Mills, with quarterbacks like Kellen Mond, with quarterbacks like Sam Ellinger. I thought we were going to see a real issue with people trying to reach way up into the draft. Like, hey, you know, it's the third round. I feel like they're about ready to go. We need to take this guy now whenever he'll be there in the sixth round. So I think the Colts did a really good job of being patient, being calm, waiting for Sam Ellinger to be there at the right moment. Um I don't think he would have been there in the seventh round, so I think where they got him was perfect. Uh, so, like I said, I, I think they solved they solved some issues they needed. Um, they maybe could have gone somewhere with the offensive tackle, but then again, we can't really be mad about it because they literally just got Eric Fisher. So, if we would have done this this edition of the show with the AFC South draft grades three days ago, I would have been like, oh, hey, terrible draft because you didn't get an offensive tackle. Blah, 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 blah. But now that this came out, I'm like, hey, great draft. He's coming in. You've got all your needs solved. And yeah. All right. Now, Tori, what is your draft grade for the Indianapolis Colts? I give them I give them a C. Um, the only reason that, that they're not getting a D is because of Quiddy Pay. And I'm a huge fan of their actual seventh round pick, Will Freeze. So those two picks kind of saved them from, from having a. Um, a, a, a failing type grade. Well, what do we, what was the saying in college? A D is a D will still get you a degree. Yep. D's get <laughs> degrees, baby. Yeah. Yeah. That's so I, that was my philosophy in high school. <laughs> I mean, that was pretty much my philosophy in school too, but <laughs> they did, they didn't do anything really outstanding in this draft. Um, they, it seems like they, they reached for a lot of guys. They made picks that didn't make sense to me. Uh, so like quitty pay, you don't pass up on a player like that. That was literally best player available at that point. And, yeah, you absolutely don't pass up on that. It's like I said, I really like the Will Freeze pick, too. But um, Sean Davis, I'm not a big fan of. Ellinger, I don't think, is a good, good quarterback. Um, you know, they got a, basically a project wide receiver, a kind of raw guy that Mike Strachan 
from the University of Charleston. So how many players have ever been drafted out of the University of Charleston? So Two. I'm just <laughs> I I have no clue. Um, you know, Kyle Kylan Granson for a tight end. Like it's like I said, it's just nothing there's nothing spectacular outside of the Quiddy Pay pick. The rest of it was just blah. So I just blah. Just blah. They get a C. 